Okay, uh, a very warm welcome to all of you, not in terms of temperature, but from my heart. I'm very, very pleased that you've all come from a long distance to be with us. And I also welcome all those people who are watching this uh, event live through the internet technology. So very warm welcome to everybody. As you can see from the map over here, we've covered a large part of the world in an audience of just 100. Yeah? So the blue indicates people who are physically here, but also indicates that we have connections in all of those blue countries. Uh, for Australia and some of the European countries, we also have just internet connections, which are labeled green on there. So we are going to be visible to a very large community. Okay? So I'll emphasize that again later on. We are going to use uh, the physical conference to disseminate the exciting materials that you have to present. Uh, there's live dissemination through the internet. You can even pick this up on your mobile phones if necessary. Uh, after the conference, all of the lectures will go on our YouTube channel forever. Uh, and that includes, uh, that includes uh, questions and answers. Okay? So this will be like a proper conference where questions and answers are also recorded. So it's very important for everybody to stay on time. We will be cracking the whip if anybody doesn't follow that instruction. So the talks are 30 minutes long, but 20 minutes available to talk and 10 minutes for your participation. So those who are not lecturing, it's very important to actually participate in the conference by active discussion. And you will not offend anybody by asking any reasonable question. Yeah. Now, I'm very pleased that uh, the publication of uh, uh, the selected talks will be in Material Science and Technology, uh, the journal, and Mark Hull, who is the managing editor. Where are you, Mark? Yeah, he's uh, in the audience if you have any questions. I'll come back to that later on. What I would like to do is change the map to cover the entire world accessing what we discuss here today. And what I can guarantee you, okay, based on our long experience with web technologies, is that within one year, 50,000 people will have accessed your information, okay? Whether it's lectures, papers, discussion, videos, etc. We will keep the APMS website live. We will not send you any emails. If you want to see how things are progressing, you just log on to that website. So we believe in just passive dissemination. We are not going to contact you to tell you, oh, we've reached 100,000 now. You will be able to see the information on the APMS website. Now, can you imagine, you know, there's only 100 people here, and we will actually disseminate within one year to an audience of 50,000. So we have a huge responsibility here. Now, none of this would have been possible without certain special people. So I'm going to go through them sequentially, but not in any particular order. Now, we are not allowed to use the CBMM logo, but I happened to be visiting CBMM in Brazil, and I took a picture of a tin of ferroniobium. So that's what the CBMM logo looks like. Okay? And on this side, we have the chief executive, Tadeo, and the chief technology officer, Marcus. Absolutely delightful characters. Neither of them at the last uh, could make it, but they had to cancel at the very last minute. You know, just imagine the world's largest niobium producing company in the world. Obviously, they will have other demands on their times, but we are very fortunate because we have Professor, uh, where are you, Professor Barbosa? Yeah to represent CBMM here today. Of course, he is also a professor, so he's interested to be here uh, in spite of that. Now, this picture is very interesting. Uh, I'll complete the picture. There's a gap in the middle. So, <laughs> so when I visited uh, Brazil for another meeting, uh, Tadeo invited me to go to one of the most famous places in the world for dinner, 
which is the Copacabana restaurant in a uh, hotel in Rio de Janeiro. I won't show you all the pictures, but you know, I, I'm, I'm sure that one bite costs a lot of money, one bite of food. And I thought this was going to be a relaxing evening. But just one minute after we started dinner, he said to me, initially he called me Professor Badisha. He said, Professor Badisha, you know that there is no free lunch. Okay? And then throughout the dinner, we talked about pipeline steels. All right? And niobium in pipeline steels. So you know that there is no registration fee for this meeting. <laughs> yeah? So you get the message that I want you all to participate. There is no free lunch. Um, when I asked for sponsorship to all the people I'm going to mention, we had extremely rapid response that the idea of this conference is so novel. When I sent an email in the morning, I received the sponsorship in the afternoon. Yeah? So I was in a laboratory class when I sent an email to Tadeo, and Brazil hadn't woken up yet. When they woke up, I had financial support for the conference. Okay? So I'm very grateful for that. POSCO, similarly, uh, this is Ojun Kwon, who now is the president and the chief technology officer of POSCO. And he has done many things for steels. In addition to the creation of GIFT, which is the Graduate Institute of Ferris Technology, now the most prominent steels research institute in the world, covering every area of steels research. Can you imagine that? You, know, you can walk upstairs and find somebody working on steel making, walk downstairs and you've got someone working on formability, huge groups on each of these areas. So we owe a great deal to Ojun Kwon, and of course, uh, Hagen Lee and so on, who created uh, steels research in universities. Uh, but in addition, once again, when I asked for sponsorship, it was immediately given without any discussion. So I'm very grateful for that. These are two characters I know extremely well. One of them is in the audience. There's Alan Bagg, who is the uh, chief of technology in uh, SKF. And Tom Johnston, who is the chief executive of SKF. And not only do they support five university technology centers in various universities throughout the world, including in Cambridge, on bearing related aspects, but they support this conference wholeheartedly and provide additional financial support, which made it possible for us to remove things like the registration fee. And last but not least, we have Tata Steel and Debashis Bhattacharjee. Where are you? Yeah, so there he is. He's the chief of technology in uh, Tata Steel uh, worldwide. And this is a picture that I took in his house in India. That's his daughter over there. And Claire Davis, where are you? Yeah, Claire Davis is uh, there, John Knott. All of these people have connections with Cambridge. Yeah? So Debashish himself um, either did his PhD or postdoc in Cambridge. I can't remember which because I'm so familiar with him now. So Tata Steel supports this conference. All of these together have provided real financial support at a time you know, when industry is having a tough time. Okay? So I'm very grateful for that. Tata Steel, in addition, uh, endowed the Tata Chair in Cambridge. So that's the celebration we had, which means that we guarantee Steel's research in Cambridge forever. Okay? So supposing you know, I fall under a bus or retire, we will have another Tata Steel professor in Cambridge. So all of these sponsors are not picked randomly. They all have Steele's research in their hearts and were very happy to contribute to this conference. Now, this is Material Science and Technology, which celebrated its 25th anniversary in 2010. And Mark Hull over there is the managing editor. There he is again. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, this is the lifestyle that he normally leads, okay? <laughs> Not. <laughs> but in 2010, I wrote an editorial in honor of the 25th anniversary where I said that this is my most favorite journal. And I'm not just saying that. I've published approximately 90 papers 
in this journal over the years. Forget about any other journal as far as metallurgy is concerned. This is the best journal on metallurgy in the world. And we will be publishing papers in this journal from this conference. And it took just five minutes of conversation on the telephone to explain the concept to Mark. And immediately he said, yes, we will be happy to publish. They don't publish conferences. Okay? So the papers are going to be independently refereed. In other words, we are not going to referee them. Okay, so that's quite different from other conferences. This will be a totally independent refereeing procedure. So if you don't write a good paper, it will be rejected. Okay? We are also very grateful to Namtech for providing the technology by which we are disseminating uh, all the information through the web, and to the Materials Research Society for advertising the meeting on, on their websites and so forth. Now, in addition, uh, this concept for this whole conference was generated over coffee. You know, we really have a lot of tea breaks in Britain. You know, we are famous for tea breaks. So every 10.30 in the morning and 3.30 in the morning, the whole department has a break. And just a casual conversation. And, you know, the whole st student body who was there just went into action and created everything. And I cannot stop here without thanking them enormously. So these are the extremely smart characters that have worked hard for this conference. So Ed Pickering. Yeah? Now Pickering is a very famous name in metallurgy. Yeah? So this is the grandson of Brian Pickering, the famous man on Bay Night. Yeah? And he always dresses smartly. Chris Smith. Um, where are you, Chris? Uh, he's in the booth, so you can't see him. But these two worked extremely hard, created a website which would look exactly identical on any web browser, any device at all, and worked perfectly, collected all the uh, information about authors, abstracts, presentations were handed in a couple of weeks before the deadline, and so on. So I'm very grateful they did this work completely voluntarily. And Lucy Fielding, who you see around taking uh, photographs, it, created the logo for the conference. Okay, This is the logo. And it actually represents the displacive formation of weedman sudden ferrite by a para-equilibrium growth mechanism. It's a real micrograph. Okay? Not only that, but we were thinking, you know, what title should we use? Key aspects in the metallurgy of steel sounded boring and so on. Suddenly she said, adventures in the physical metallurgy of steels. What a wonderful title. Uh, we have Steve Oy, who handled all the internet technologies. Uh, he is a postdoctoral researcher in our group, an exceptionally hard worker. And uh, I don't know where he is, but oh, there, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, these two ladies, um, Anita and Anne, did a huge amount of work to arrange all the registration and many other items, including the choice of the venue. They inspected the venue, et cetera, to see that it's the right size and the meal menus and so forth. So I have no idea what we are going to eat, but if you have anything, any comments, you pass it on to them. So very grateful to them. In addition, there are other people in the group. Yeah, these are real pictures, all right? Uh, you can see they have a lot of fun. If you need any help during your stay, then any one of these people will be very glad to help you. Okay? So they've all contributed in one way or another to this meeting. So that's uh, my sincere thanks to all of these people, the sponsors as well as those who have helped in the creation of this concept. And you know, I have one more slide. So all that remains now. You see, we've done everything to organize this conference really like clockwork. All that remains is for the speakers to deliver, to deliver the most exciting talks of their life. Okay? <laughs> and there is no entertainment organized for this conference because every lecture will be entertaining in <laughs> itself. Okay? So once again, welcome to the meeting, and I think uh, okay, you, you can, you can clap. <laughs> okay. <laughs>